Okay, welcome to this presentation. I'm going to start off with a quick case about a 12-hour-old female with diminished lung sounds. So mom presents at 39 weeks to the ER um, with contractions. A few hours later, a female infant was born via cesarean due to fetal distress and a history of prior C-section. Um, resuscitation efforts were not needed. Apgars were six and eight. Um, and then a few hours later, uh, decreased breath sounds were noted on physical exam along with some subcostal retractions. Maternal history was um, significant for mom received little prenatal care. Otherwise, uh, maternal screening is benign. Labs were drawn on this uh, little girl, and CBC was benign. ABG did show a respiratory acidosis picture. Um, there was a worsening in the clinical picture as well, with some increased work of breathing, uh, subcostal attractions, and grunting. Um, and this patient was. Uh, intubated and then transported to the NICU where chest x-ray was performed. Um, chest x-ray revealed multiple lucent masses in the left hemithorax, the left lower portion of the hemithorax, and um, also of note the lines and tubes that are um, visualized are also noted to be displaced to the right I'm noting a shifted mediastinum. And this picture is um, evidence of a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. So I want to talk a little bit about um, congenital diaphragmatic hernia for the rest of this talk. Um, the pathogenesis starts in the um, fetal development period um, and involves the a few structures, the septum transversum and the pleural peritoneal membranes um, are the major players. And really the way that CDHs occur um, are uh, a failure of these pleural peritoneal membranes to develop. This is the most common type of uh, congenital hernia. It's called the Bokdalek uh, hernia or defect. Um, this most commonly occurs on the left side. Um, and then the other type of hernia uh, seen in the neonatal period is the Morgagni hernia. And uh, this is a failure of the retrosternal segment of the septum transversum to develop. Here's a picture of that. Um, as you can see on the picture on the left, there is this sort of brown um, disc that is the septum transversum. Behind, posterior to that, uh, you'll find the, these canals called the pericardioperitoneal canals. <clears throat> and in this middle picture, it shows that there's this pink sliver along the dorsal aspect of the thoracic cavity um, and that is those are uh, the um, pericardio oh, sorry the pleural peritoneal membranes and by eight to ten weeks those membranes should close and meet up with the septum transversum um, but in the case of hernia, congenital hernia, that process fails to occur. So in terms of what is um, protruding through these defects, um, they are abdominal contents making their way into the thoracic cavity, uh, the most common of which is the smaller large bowel, but also the spleen and the liver um, are also commonly involved in the stomach. You can also um, 
make its way into the thoracic cavity. Um, the underlying process is thought to be a mesenchymal insult occurring sometime in the prenatal period. Um, and this accounts for the other anomalies such as pulmonary apoplasia, uh, congenital heart defects, neural tube defects, and various uh, GI uh, defects as well. You can imagine uh, if those structures are involved um, with uh, the hernia, then there's going to be some uh, residual anomalies. Uh, I want to talk about the most significant of these anomalies is that probably um, has the largest effect on patient outcomes. So abdominal contents making uh, you know, having this abnormal presence in the thoracic cavity will cause a mass effect on the lung leading to uh, disrupted development of the tracheobronchial tree. Um, surfactant deficiency can occur because there will be a reduced number of type 2 pneumocytes. Um, pulmonary hypertension can also occur due to re a reduced number of arterioles. Um, and then there's this uh, also increase in smooth muscle cells, um, which kind of decrease the diameter of the pulmonary vasculature and increase the resistance. Um, pulmonary hypoplasia accounts for one third of neonatal death, deaths from CDH. Of note, the mortality rate of CDH is estimated to be at 50%. Um, so something clinically to look out for, I, its respiratory distress is the main picture. Um, tachypnea, increased work of breathing, uh, so on and so forth, uh, are the major players. The also, less severe defects can kind of paint this more confounding picture because patients can present later on in life and um, these uh, patients can have various symptoms from respiratory to GI, uh, so that's something to look out for as well. Most of these patients, um, 50 to 85%, are diagnosed prenatally, um, and it's done via ultrasound. Um, this top picture shows a normal fetus with a properly developed diaphragm that separates abdominal contents from thoracic contents. You can see uh, in this sagittal view uh, there's this stomach bubble um, sort of in the inferior part of the fetal trunk but superior um, to that you see a heart and its chambers. In the lower picture you can see um, in a transverse view, a gastric bubble right next to a heart. Um, so that would be a, a diagnosis of congenital diaphragmatic hernia in the prenatal period. If the picture is unclear, MRI um, may be used for uh, confirming the diagnosis or for more fully characterizing uh, what's going on in the fetus. Both of those modalities um, are used to help predict outcomes um, in the prenatal period. Uh, ultrasound can be used to measure this lung to head ratio and then that number is then compared or divided by uh, the expected lung to head ratio and that number is then um, predictive of uh, you know the outcome of these of these babies in the literature. Uh, you know this number less than fifteen percent is a pretty um, dismal picture for uh, those patients. Another number uh, that can be used to predict outcomes um, is derived from total lung volume is measured by MRI and that lung volume uh, can be compared to 
an expected lung volume again and, and you kind of get this percent predicted lung volume and a number greater than 20 has been associated with 100% survival a number less than 15 has been associated with a number less than 40% um, management is focused mainly on cardiorespiratory function uh, it's important to uh, immediate have immediate intubation if that intubation fails move uh, to uh, ECMO um, it's very important to get a stabilization uh, of these patients so that surgery can can occur um, nitric oxide has also been described as a means for um, improving uh, pulmonary hypertension and in complicated cases um, you can use the exit procedure to transition um, to ECMO um, it has been been described as helpful uh, in case reports however a publication in the Journal of Pediatric Surgery uh, recently showed that there's really no clear survival benefit um, by doing the exit to ECMO routine. Um, as was mentioned before, uh, ultrasound detects up to 85%, but that leaves uh, you know remaining cases that go undiagnosed in the postnatal period, and so chest x-ray becomes a large part of uh, diagnosis done in the postnatal period. And what is often and most commonly seen um, are these bubble lucencies um, noted in the left hemithorax and also a uh, rightward shift of the mediastinum and <clears throat> a hypoplastic lung on the ipsilateral side of the defect. Um, these pictures help us to gain an appreciation uh, for the lines and tubes, um, they can often help uh, show that there is an abnormally placed mediastinum. Um, <clears throat> and also, in this left picture, you will see uh, this characteristic J-shaped uh, gastric tube. Um, as the stomach in this picture is part of the herniated contents in the left hemithorax. Um, CDH can also have this solid um, mass appearance um, if the liver is involved or if the structures that are herniated uh, like the bowel does not contain gas and those patients are usually the patients that were immediately intubated after birth. And as no gas um, has entered the gut. The other type of hernia, um, as was mentioned early on, is the Morgagni hernia, and uh, this occurs in the retrosternal area. Um, you can appreciate best in the lateral view the retrosternal distribution um, of bowel. Um, this type of hernia is also associated with trisomy 21, um, which is most com or is commonly found as an incidental finding. So, CDH can be difficult to uh, diagnose. Um, the other entities on this slide um, can show similar. Uh, imaging to congenital diaphragmatic hernia, um, particularly congenital pulmonary airway malformation. Um, type 1, large type 1 lesions are often confused with CDH. Management of CDH, uh, as was mentioned before, uh, result, revolves mainly around stabilizing cardiorespiratory function so that surgical repair can be done. Uh, minimally invasive surgery uh, 
has been um, successfully done. However, this is reserved for the smaller defects, um, but also there is a higher rate of recurrence. Um, and so open surgery would then be reserved for the larger defects. Uh, imaging done in the post-surgical period will reveal a vacant space which then is um, occupied by water and air so hydropneumothorax um, is is expected to occur in these in these patients um, it has been observed that this condition self resolves and so no intervention is required for that purpose And these are my references. Thank you for your time and attention during this presentation.